Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Chris Rand of Norton Test and Inspection. We're going to talk today about manual x-ray inspection. Chris, where do you see manual x-ray inspection fit in? What's changed here and why is it important now? Well, I think x-ray inspection has been uh, important for, for quite a number of years, but it's increasingly so as um, as packages in particular uh, and features that, that, that people are interested in actually inspecting are getting smaller and more complex. You've also got more heterogeneity going into these packages and not all the packages are, even if they're 2D on a, a fan out, they're not totally planar, right? You have basically bumps in different dimensions in there. Right, exactly. You know, and that's one of the strengths of, of X-ray imaging that we're able to see through all of those layers uh, simultaneously. Therein presents some challenges as well, because being able to isolate out those individual layers that you want to inspect. And that's really one of the strengths of the, the manual X-ray inspection techniques. What are companies actually looking for in terms of defects? Is it really defects, latent defects? Is it uh, things that don't go together that you would expect in, in normal ways? What are the, how is this being used in the market? The, the defects typically um, looking at the connection qualities through the different layers uh, to make sure things are going to be functionally correct. Um, some of these things you can't necessarily just get by test methods alone, and you, you, you need to be able to see these. Uh, but also looking to make sure that everything is where it should be, and everything that should be there is, is there, in, in, in addition to making sure that things that shouldn't be there uh, uh, are also not there. So you've got things like die shift as well as potentially security issues as well, right? Correct. That's correct. So uh, you certainly can make sure that you've got things, um, everything lined up as, as they should be, which, which can be a first indicator to where you may end up having a problem if, if things aren't, aren't aligned correctly. But yes, also all the way through to to uh, you know, end, end users looking to use some of these devices and actually making sure that they're the real deal as well. Do different materials behave differently under x-ray? Can you see through all materials equally? You, you absolutely can't, no. So they, it very much has a big effect on, on the imaging itself. What we're relying on with x-ray is a, a good balance between absorption and, and transparency. Um, so that's what allows us to build up a picture. If the x-rays pass through unimpeded through the material, then by extension, we don't see anything. Uh, so we're, we really are relying on having a good contrast of where those x-rays actually are being absorbed. When you're dealing with a an older node chip, 28 nanometers, 40 nanometers, is that does it move faster with X-ray than it does when you get down into seven, five, three nanometers? And certainly, the smaller the feature that, that you're looking at, the smaller of the smaller the field of view that that you're using is, and and that necessarily that that does have the knock-on effect that you will need more images to 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 inspect the entire device. That does have an impact on on the time of inspection. One of the things about X-ray is everybody's always looked at this as a fairly slow type of technology. Has it speeded up over time? Yeah, it absolutely has. I mean, that's um, one of the things that's been a big focus for our manual in, uh, X-ray inspection um, systems at, at Nordson, um, that uh, we've really focused around that ease of use and that speed mm -hmm. to acquire those images, but to acquire really high resolution images. That's really, really important um, uh, for us and, and, and for our users. Do you encounter noise with x-ray like you do with other types of inspection? In a similar, in a similar sense, there is definitely a noise aspect. And uh, the main way to, to, to deal with that is to increase the frame averaging. And that allows us to, to sort of average out any kind of scattering that you get as those x-rays pass through different materials. And obviously the more dense a material is, the more of that scattering you might get. Um, so you may need to use longer image averaging to, to reduce that noise. How about machine learning in there as well? Does that help? 
Yeah, this is an area that's really growing at the moment and certainly a, a big topic uh, within Nordson about how we use that across all of our inspection equipment. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely an element where, where things can be improved in, in that sense. More on the sort of image analysis and automation side in particular. With X-ray, are you typically using that pre-production, during production or post-production when things come back in saying, okay, we, this isn't working in the field? Yeah, it's really a combination of, of multiple places, actually. There's very definitely a big emphasis on that kind of failure analysis for things that have been out in the field uh, and, and have come back and need to be you know, have some level of investigation. Uh, but also um, during the production process, uh, that's also an, uh, an area where you want to check uh, because it can obviously be very ex expensive to... to have a process problem occur and, and not catch that early enough. But also actually pre-production as well, when, you know, when it comes to the um, setting up of those processes and also in, in, the, in the development work for those products. What are you finding the biggest take up for this? Is it in new applications like automotive, uh, where you're worried about functional safety, uh, mission critical type things like uh, data centers? We're really seeing a pull for, for manual X-ray inspection uh, across the board with, with semiconductor in the, in, in the mid end, the back end, purely because of the, the complexity of, of, of what's being produced now and the, and the feature sizes that they're actually involved in in these devices um but also the 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 expense that goes into each one of these things it's it's really important that the the yields are as good as they can be and being able to inspect and understand where you might have issues is is more important today than it ever has been and you also have multiple chips going into these devices as well too right so the cost of getting something wrong goes up exponentially as you start adding more things into a, a package absolutely you know when when you're putting these packages together you 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 need to be doing it with with you know known good dye uh, known good uh, um, you know substrates or rdls and um, once you put them together they still have to be good so you know there there are so many opportunities for for defects to to creep in you mentioned RDL. That's becoming an interesting area because in the past, people tended to ignore that as sort of this goop down below. But reality is this is now the where people are saying, OK, this is an expansion slot basically for a chip. We can add more wires in here. We can add uh, different kinds of circuits and different components. You can now see into that with x-rays, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, the feature sizes are still pretty small. You know, some of these being in sort of like... Uh, eight micron line size or, 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 or less. Um, but this is uh, the level of um, feature size that, that we're really looking to be able to inspect with, with the manual X-ray inspection machines. So let's drill down a little bit. How does this actually work? So the, the X-ray system itself works by, first of all, having a, an X-ray source uh, that, that gives you the sort of highest resolution um, X-ray you can realistically get within within a, a usable size package and, and a detector. Um, so as those x-rays are, are produced and they travel through the, 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 the object under inspection, they then pass through and collected by that detector. And it's, it's the combination of where those, where those x-rays are uh, actually hitting the detector and what's not hitting the de detector because it's been absorbed that helps us build up that, that image. In the past, a lot of this was single uh, tubes, right? Now it, you can add multiple tubes and basically speed this up fairly significantly, or does that work for getting better resolution? The dual mode tube that we're talking about at the moment is still a single X-ray source, um, but it allows to have two, two specialized modes, effectively a, a higher resolution mode and a higher flux mode. Uh, flux is it, you know, higher flux mode is really important when you're looking at more dense materials. Uh, whereas that higher resolution mode, that's that's where you're really looking at the the smallest of features. So basically, this is your abstraction in X-rays, right? 
Yeah, so X-ray X-ray tubes uh, they always come with a level of compromise. Uh, you can you, you have a balance between lifetime and uh, power and uh, and resolution, and the way you balance that equation needs to be specific for for the type of application that that you want. Uh, the the tubes that we've been producing o over you know the last um, you know, 20, 20 years or so have, have been set up to be, give the best balance of all those things, you know, long lifetimes, high power and high resolution. Uh, with, this, with this new dual, dual mode tube, it just allows us to adjust that equation just a little bit so that you've got the ability just to get a bit more resolution when you really need it. The initial versions of X-ray inspection were somewhat destructive on some of the chips, right? What's changed? So the sensitivity of our imaging chain is is really important in this respect, and being able to to image um, faster. So the 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 new sort of high frame rate um, detectors that we've got now allow us to to image very quickly and reduce the dose imparted onto onto the de device under inspection. And that's really, really important. You've also got software that goes with this. What's changed in the software? How sophisticated has the software become versus where it was, say, a couple of years ago? Well, that's that's actually a, a, a been a major development for us over the last few years. Um, I think you only really have to look at the way applications in general and software in general has changed in just a very short amount of time. So, for, the software that we're putting out now, uh, we've completely changed the structure of that, so it's in a more modular fashion, which means it's it's much easier to update, add functionality, and and address any bugs without incurring any unwanted changes, uh, and that means that we can spend more of our time adding functionality and improving software rather than and then just maintaining it. There's also an expectation from from customers and from the market in general, um, where software is is no longer something that's a necessity just to you know to have a button that makes something happen. It 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 needs to provide uh, a, an experience to that user uh, as well. So it's a really in, um, important change in the dynamic of of what software is now. Has the perception of X-ray inspection changed over the past couple of years? Is it, was it driven largely by the fact that now everything is being put into a package as opposed to just being laid out on a substrate? Yeah, I mean there has been a, a real change in the perception of X-ray as a, you know from a nice to have process to being something that's that's absolutely necessary to to prove the quality of the of the of the products that are being made now. Chris Rand, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much for, for inviting me on today.